moving on to Topic Tuesday. All right, it's Topic Tuesday. We have another great article here from Adam Ahmed. He is our third year medical student that is helping us with our Topic Tuesdays. So last week, we talked about dissections. We talked about how the dissections in the innermost and middle layer of the aorta is where this happened. And we talked about a type A dissection, which is ascending. And we talked about a type B, which is, as a friend of ours said, bascending or descending. Um, if you have any questions about that, leave your comments uh, on this post. But now we have a, a nice summary of aortic aneurysms from Medline Plus. So we're gonna go over all of these and take a look at this. See, here's a normal aorta. Kind of weird, kind of interesting looking, normal. This is an aorta with a very large abdominal aneurysm. Why do we say it's abdominal? Because it's right where it splits. This is your abdominal area, see that? That's normal, that's not so normal. Okay, so this gives you an idea on what an aneurysm would look like. I'd say this looks like it's pretty significant. Though I don't know what size it is, but it's looking pretty significant to me. So let's talk about this. So an aneurysm offer, often refers to a bulge or swelling within the wall of the artery in the body, which is often due to some weakness or uh, yeah, just some weakness in the structure of the lining of the, of the vessel, okay? Larger aneurysms carry an elevated risk of rupture or dissection. So that's why they're important. They're important to monitor or properly diagnose so that we avoid that. And that part, remember we say is a lot more rare, but it's a lot more common to have the aneurysm. And they can develop anywhere along your aorta from where it comes out of the heart all the way down into where it goes into the legs. So they're often grouped into two main categories. You have the abdominal aortic aneurysm or AAA. Now see this because there's a lot of people out there on groups, the ascending aortic aneurysm group that often refer to their aneurysms as a triple A. It is not a triple A. A triple A is commonly understood to be the abdominal aortic aneurysm. So there's often confusion out of just lack of knowledge or trying to move fast and make things easier. Abdominal aortic aneurysm is your triple A, okay? And they're much more common type of aneurysms and they typically are, occur lower uh, in the abdomen uh, along the abdominal region, which we just showed this area in here, okay? Then you have your TAA. That is your thoracic aortic aneurysm. Now that's gonna be upper in the chest. Anything that's in the chest is thoracic, okay? And so those tend to be associated when you get them more with a connective tissue disorder like Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos. These occur higher in the aorta. And that's, as I just said, in the chest area, okay? Now, if you had something in the ascending, coming right out of the heart, this is still your thoracic ascending aortic aneurysm, okay? not a triple a it's not an ascending aortic aneurysm because it's thoracic so you got to make sure you have that t in there just if you want to be speaking properly just saying aortic aneurysms share the same risk factors as the ones we discussed uh, with aortic aneurysms last week so that includes hypertension male gender typically smoking older age and people with tissue disorders one important thing to note actually about aneurysms is that there's a lot of evidence now to suggest that there is typically a familial association, or as we were talking about, some type of genetic component uh, with aneurysm formations. And it doesn't mean they have to be in the same area, okay? So my father had an abdominal, I had a thoracic. There's still a familial situation there, okay? Uh, so it's, it's very important that if you or your loved one had been diagnosed with an aneurysm, it's important to make sure your first degree relatives are screened by your physician. And screening does not necessarily mean you jump right to a CT. There's a lot of, there's a lot that you can tell from an echo, but there's still a lot you can't see. So leave it up to the doctor to learn about your family medical history. Again, we go back to think aorta, think family, share this information because there's such a high chance of it being uh, familial, you want to share this information. It, even if it's a brain aneurysm, you know, vessels are vessels. There might be other components in your medical history that would lend a physician to want to just do that scan and make sure they get your baseline, okay? Uh, and again, if you have any specific symptoms, um, like if you're feeling a bulge in your stomach, 
okay? You're feeling pal uh, palpitations or your heartbeat really um, strongly in your abdominal area. Uh, you're having some shortness of breath. Maybe you're having some trouble swallowing or pain that might travel to your back. These are all indicators that your aneurysm might be quite large because you're actually feeling them now in your body cavity. So a diagnosis of that abdominal aneurysm can actually be done with an ultrasound. It can also be done with a CT scan, but to avoid the radiation, a lot of times it is done just with an ultrasound wand, okay? So there are ways to do this without that radiation ex exposure. But if one is discovered, even if it's in the abdominal area, there's many treatment options. Uh, both of these options could include something surgical, typically open, or they're now doing a lot more endovascular repair. So they're going up like through the groin or in through the wrist and they're able to fix things that way. But be sure to have a very open and honest conversation with your physician and with your family members. Talk about all different treatment options. Get a second and if need be a third opinion if it's gonna make you feel more comfortable. And you also wanna ask questions about expected recovery because open, your recovery is going to be longer uh, endovascular is going to be shorter, but there may be higher risks with one than another. And again, there is, there's really no one answer for all people because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's age is different. If we have comorbidities like other additional illnesses. So when you hear things or when you read things that's online, this should all be taken as just a bit of information for you to take back to your physician and have that conversation. Okay. So this was our Tuesday that was all about, uh, all about aneurysms. So hopefully if you learned something that resonated with you or developed a question in you, take this information back to your physician. That's our topic Tuesday.